And welcome back everyone to Entrepreneuring. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, and my guests today are both graduates of NMSU, Colin King and Lucas Morales. Welcome to the show, guys. How's it going? It's great to be here. It's, go it's going all right. I got my, my coffee just off screen. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie, I kind of need it this morning, a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, for I forgot my coffee, so. Oh, no, that's uh, not. Yeah. I well, slammed at home, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Nice, nice. Well, it is Friday, so it's not, not too stressful. We're going to sit here and uh, have a nice little chat. So you are here today to talk about, uh, to talk about zeal. Mm -hmm. So obviously, my first question uh, is: What what exactly is zeal? Uh, you want me to take this one? Sure. Um, so zeal is a uh, task management system for volunteers, and so the basic idea is to uh, organize uh, very organic grassroots uh, uh, groups of volunteers uh, that have a common goal, and we're using techniques such as uh, gamification and uh, intelligent uh, algorithms such as machine learning and pattern recognition in order to bring uh, leadership and volunteers together and uh, make it a uh, less barrier of entry into getting into the interests of uh, whatever you might have, whether it's in your community, uh, internationally, or politics nationally, or locally. So, Right. And the the idea was sort of conceived by um, thinking about this election cycle and um, how many candidates we had on both sides um, fighting for the primary for the presidency um, this year. And so one question that we had was how can we make the process of getting involved in politics easier and more fun um, and sort of break that process down to, let's say, um, a student wants to be really involved with the Bernie Sanders campaign or the Donald Trump campaign or whichever campaign they choose and they've got only like five minutes between classes. Well, we wanted to have a system in place where we can really leverage that five minutes that they do have um, to accomplish something meaningful um, in the political campaign. And it, it doesn't have to be limited to politics. That's just where we where we started, but the, the whole idea is that um, you could volunteer when you want, um, where you want, and then at your own, at your own time. So that's, that's basically the goal of, of the platform. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So where did your kind of initial inspiration come from this? Uh, you mentioned politics a couple of times now, and it seems to me like my first reaction is like, okay, this seems like an alternative to, to where I see a lot of this happening, which is on Twitter, which honestly, uh, I feel can feel it, it can seem a little bit like yelling into the void at times. Sure. Yeah. Well, that that is a uh, kind of Twitter's function, I guess. We've we've had to do a little bit of uh, Twitter hacking ourselves to try to grow up our uh, our ability to promote ourselves. Um, but I think the idea was kind of brewing around in my head for for quite a while. Uh, but I was busy on another project. And uh, when me and Colin here got together a lot, uh, I'd often ask him essentially the question of, well, you know, what does it take for uh, a politician to get elected? And the answer for that was normally just lots of piles of cash, right? And so I kept thinking it over and kind of picking at Colin's mind and asking, you know, well, what's all that money used for, right? Or how could we use that money uh, more efficiently make less money go further or something, right? And I eventually came down to the idea that essentially my problem with politics is I have really no idea what's going on and how to participate. And I think that my problem was, is probably and likely the problem of many other people. So I kind of set out and proposed this idea as a solution to my own problem. Okay. Yeah, and so the issue really when we would we would discuss that was how can we sort of change the equation in getting elected into political office? Um, and of course, this is post Citizens United and and um, post the ability of companies and individuals to give large amounts of money to candidates. And what money really buys is exposure, um, a well organized ground team, um, the ability to have your message out in all 50 states very early in the game, things that you need money for. So then the question is, how can we accomplish those goals with less money or no money um, and truly have a grassroots political movement? Um, and that was where right. we came up with this, where together we came up with this idea, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the unique approaches that we kind of have in our minds is rather than go the uh, perhaps legal or reformist type route that many organizations are already pursuing to overturn Citizens United, get money out of politics, I think we're kind of going with a guess that maybe we might be able to make money less relevant in politics. So rather than go through a legal framework, we're going through sort of this entrepreneurial private sector type framework of let's just try to make tools available for everyone equally uh, so that we could make the money that gets flooded into politics uh, less relevant. Gotcha. So yeah, it, it seems like a very natural progression. It's, uh, it's a topic the two of you are clearly very passionate about. Um, and so you're, you're trying, like you said, Lucas, clearly you, you, you were finding uh, it, it hard and difficult to find out how to get involved at a local level. And so you guys have just kind of landed on, well, let's build it. Let's build the network. Let's make it easy for your average citizen to know where to go on the weekend or, or what have you. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So let, let's get down. So we know the, we know the message. We know your goal. Let's get down to how you're, how you're building it. What, what is it? Where is it right now? And, you know, in terms of your development, um, I, I know we talked a little bit off, off, off air about it, but, um, you know, where are you right now and, and when do you see release coming? Uh, well, we've been, uh, we're, we're a small team at this point and, uh, we've had a little bit of trouble of, uh, finding, uh, people to get on board with us that have the same, uh, type of vision and, more importantly, have time available since uh, many of us are students around uh, NMSU, uh, especially like this week as an example uh, with finals and things like that, you know, uh, things kind of come to a standstill. Uh, so we, we've, we've been quite a bit delayed because our initial uh, projection was to kind of uh, at least start participating in this election cycle as a proof of concept. So this would have been hopefully around January, uh, but we're about what six months later. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that, uh, we're a little bit behind, but we're we're chugging along. Um, the the platform as a whole right now is we, we've got a few stages of release that we're planning, and I think uh, by the end of this month we'll hopefully have our first round of uh, alpha testers, yeah. which is uh, groups that we're kind of targeting locally. Uh, that are local organizations and we're going to work very closely with them to make sure that our platform actually uh, meets uh, their needs and what the next uh, stages of development need to focus on uh, going forward. So, so th it's, this is a topic that comes up fairly frequently when talking to really anyone with some type of new startup. Uh, you mentioned it, you know, it's, it's basically trying to manage that balance of, you know, you're at school, there's, there's finals going on right now, uh, you know, your, your potential uh, volunteers to help you with the alpha, the, the pre-alpha process are kind of at a standstill at this moment. And also it affects your own personal life. H how do you, how do you kind of, how do you fight against that? How do you strike that balance and keep going uh, during an extremely busy portion of your life? Like, you know, this month? Um, well, uh, do you got anything for that? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it's difficult. I, I'm also, I work full time. I manage the, the tech center on campus so um, with Apple products and all that. So I, I work full time there. Um, fortunately, Lucas and I have both already graduated, so we don't have to worry about finals this week. Um, but it really is sort of allowing flexibility when we're working with the rest of our team, um, knowing that I mean, we've been there and that finals and papers and all that stuff comes up throughout the semester. Um, and so it's, it's really managing ex expectations and understanding that if we don't have, if we don't make certain deadlines like the January deadline, that there's still a plan in place to roll this platform out um, when it's completed so that we don't completely lose developers um, because we miss a deadline and now what are we going to do with the platform once it's built, right? Sure. So um, that's why we really are looking at nonprofits, um, particularly, like Lucas said, some local nonprofits that we have as sort of a captive audience for our alpha test. Because if you think about it, the, um, the work of a campaign is very similar to the work of nonprofit organizations. They both need to get volunteers to turn out in large numbers for the events that they have. They both need um, donations of money. They both need don donations of skill, um, time. All of those things are very easily translatable between a nonprofit and a campaign, and we're already 
leveraging um, our platform to be able to, to, to work in both worlds. Um, so that's our, that's our plan going forward, which has been beneficial because, in it, like I said, it keeps our developers focused, even though we're missing a few of our early deadlines in the primary races. Right. And on, on the, I guess on the topic, if that's what you were uh, fishing for, of uh, like team dynamics and, and things of this sort, I, you know, your, your team is, is really important. And I've worked on uh, long projects before. Uh, where you know I'm in the development phase for a year plus, <laughs> and uh, basically, like my own personal schedule is, I essentially wake up, I get to work, I eat, get to work, you know, and I don't go to bed till you know like three o'clock in the morning, and just nap whenever I can, right? Uh, but you can only go so long doing that out of your own uh, like steam, and so one of the the things that and we've kind of struggled with this a little bit is having the team all pushing each other uh, it's it's great when people are expecting something from you at a certain time because it it holds you uh, to actually make you know that type of deadline and make those steps uh, you know bite-sized chunks week to week or day to day and uh, this project right now I've been in development for about I think uh, eight months yeah okay uh, so it's it's been another one of those uh, really long processes that you just have to uh, fight <laughs> to keep it to keep uh, you know interest in steam and and development at a constant pace so. right yeah those, those, those kind of milestones you're talking about whether it's a deadline or just a, a general schedule really do help especially over the course of a, of a long period of time spent on a single project Right. right, right, and 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 speaking, it's it's, it's funny because you mentioned gamification techniques earlier, uh, and that's where I'd like to steal, steer the conversation now because it, it it seems like to keep yourself going, you kind of have to gamify it for yourself. It's like, all right, this is the goal this week, let's hit it, and and it feels good when you meet that goal. Um, but how ex specifically, as it relates to to Zeal and the you know the application you're developing, um, what type of uh, of game gamification techniques are you using? Uh, so there's there's several. Um other services out there that have uh, applied gamification techniques to other aspects of your life. So as an example, there's a uh, fitocracy that gives you uh, kind of challenges and then uh, uh, badges and awards and things like that for getting out and doing, you know, 50 push-ups or, you know, uh, running an extra mile in your workout or uh, things like this. Uh, there's one that you use for personal finance, right? Yeah, there's one that I use. Um, it's not, a, I mean, it's, it's real world gamification because I, I use the app called Robinhood to manage um, a small investment portfolio. And that, I mean, the gamification points are actual dollars, so it works pretty, um, pretty seamlessly there. Right. But gamification on our platform um, is going to be centered around really sort of three major ideas. Uh, one of them is borrowed from Reddit, so it's the idea of having social capital. Um, and you accumulate social points through um, actions on the platform that other users upvote or downvote in a, in a right. ranking system. Um, so that's one, one element. And with that social points, your missions that you post to the platform will be either listed higher on the page um, or will be seen as more reputable to the social community. So that's one group. Um, then we also have what we call um, experience points, which right. you earn uh, as you complete missions and tasks. So these experience points in the same way as, a, as an RPG will um, allow your character, which in this case is yourself, to level up through um, the leveling system on Zeal. Okay, uh, so you have that, levels on your personal account. Exactly, yeah. Right. So you'd be, when, you, when someone sees your profile on Zeal, they can see that you've been a member since X date and that you are level 35 and that you've done, you've been involved in this campaign, you volunteered for that organization. So it's sort of a social stature kind of gamification on the experience part. And then we also wanted to make it fun um, and in a way sort of sometimes sort of comedic. So we have an achievement system for things that can be as random as completing your first mission or um, if you complete a certain number of missions in the same area, there may be some geographic achievements that are really relevant to those people in your area. Um, so it can be like a fun sort of Easter egg of when you complete a mission, you're not sure if you're going to get an achievement, but you'll get these little awards that are like, they function like stickers on some apps. Um, so you get a little picture and the title of the achievement and things like that. Yeah, and we actually hope to take the uh, gamification system even further uh, as we go along. 
so one of the ideas is, is as we uh, build up a clientele of organizations that we work with, uh, we'll try to work something out where uh, those organizations have a specific uh, kind of uh, set of awards or achievements that are branded specific to that organization as well as hopefully be able to offer some some real world uh, uh, you know reward uh, as you achieve more and more in that vein of uh, that particular organization so as an example you know like if you're doing something for the Red Cross we might uh, brand uh, certain uh, achievements specific to the Red Cross and maybe uh, talk about uh, particular individuals who are very active within the Red Cross and and then hopefully have the Red Cross uh, help us help them uh, by trying to offer maybe you know I don't know uh, a PS4 as an example of you know doing so much volunteer work uh, you get uh, potentially whoever gets first or something of that sort will get something back yeah so like a real-world award that you can get by attaining a certain level or competing against other members on the platform. Um, also farther down the line we've thought about implementing a, a PVP kind of system where you get randomly paired up with another user on the platform and the user that completes the most missions and earns the most experience points during a set given time wins some kind of a prize as well. And it could be anything from t-shirts given by um, volunteer organizations or campaigns to buttons to stickers, all sorts of stuff like that. And then yeah the high-end stuff. Yeah. Um, for so we're, we're, we're really taking this gamification concept and really trying to get as much out of it as we can uh, applicable to the real world and uh, the idea here is basically you know if you've uh, been a WoW player or you know uh, like Destiny's a big one right now that I'm playing I don't, I don't know the games you're talking about I certainly haven't lost months of my <laughs> life to them you, you certainly have a life right <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, what? I don't know what you're but, talking about uh, you know the idea here is that people really uh, spend a lot of time and they they care a lot about uh, these uh, fictional worlds. So what we want to try to do is, again, in all these other bridges that we're trying to build between leadership and volunteers and uh, information within your community and politics and things like that, we're also trying to build a bridge between how you use your time in a meaningful way and hopefully, uh, you know, these gamification techniques uh, in the same way that you would spend lots of hours in a game, uh, you would spend lots of hours hopefully actually making real world impact in something that you care about. Right, absolutely. I, I, I love I like the idea of the PvP quite a bit because <laughs> I feel like even if you didn't you didn't necessarily win your head to head, it's like well I I still got out and I still helped my community. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a friendly PvP. Right, which is. Uh, as a gamer is a, a baffling statement to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's it's been interesting, too, um, because I think uh, uh, a lot of people um, at or below a certain age really kind of get what we're talking about. And I think they really see where we're trying to go. Uh, but it's been uh, somewhat difficult, I think, talking to a, a few members of the older community because it's kind of a concept that that doesn't really make any sense to them. There's no analogy really that they have to work off of. So that's uh, something going forward that that's a challenge for us to to work towards, uh, especially when uh, we're talking to organizations where perhaps the leadership that actually makes all the decisions are of, doesn't understand <laughs> are of the older generation that might not necessarily understand what the worth of of what we're trying to do is. So. Yeah, it's one of the interesting things. A lot of times in, the, in those scenarios, um, it becomes a lot easier to pitch once you've once you've landed at least your your first organization that you've worked together on with some type of promotion, whether it be the Red Cross or which is the an example you gave. Because then at least it's something you can document and you can point to as an example moving right. forward, and it kind of starts that snowball. Right. Sure. Yeah. Well, and our plan for that too is we're initially going to be offering the platform at no cost for these channels in order to get. Um, in order to get major stakeholders on board. Um, and we haven't really gone much into monetization or how we want to, how we plan on really making money on the platform. But basically the, the ultimate goal is everyone 
can download Zeal for free. Anyone can be a Zeal user for free in perpetuity and have all the access to the major features that we have on the platform. So gamification, there's not going to be any microtransactions or anything like that on the site for users. Um, and the idea too is at some point, we may not launch with the feature, but at some point we want every user to be able to create missions as well as join missions. So the mission creation process would allow any user to say, hey, um, we need volunteers to go to the local homeless shelter um, because we're, we were really low on volunteers last week. So that's not part of an, of an organization per se, but it fits within your geography. So everyone within that geography would be pushed this mission as an option to join. Um, you let people become one, their, their uh, real life quest giver. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. A real life, real life non-player character. <laughs> and so uh, what Colin was uh, going towards for uh, monetization right now, our, our basic concept is that organizations such as the Red Cross or a political campaign later down the road uh, who wants to lead our user base in an official capacity. So again, like we might brand uh, awards and achievements in, in a candidate's uh, particular uh, you know, style. Uh, as an example, uh, Bernie Sanders in this uh, election cycle uh, has many memes going forward that are things like fill the burn, yeah. uh, birdie, uh, many different things. And so we would we would capitalize on these uh, kind of elements of, of uh, a person's personality or uh, style and offer those as, uh, as a package uh, to lead users in an official capacity. Uh, Additionally, uh, we're we're hoping to again uh, bring a lot of tools that are perhaps uh, locked out of everyday kind of local small time politicians and community leaders uh, such as uh, data analytics uh, you, you know you probably spend a lot of uh, big bucks uh, getting uh, data analysis and metrics and things like that on your user base and the the, that becomes a barrier that only high profile candidates end up uh, having access to. So we want to offer that at a lower price uh, to anyone who's leading. And so that would be another uh, channel of revenue that we'd uh, see going forward. Okay. Yeah. You put a lot yeah, of... See granular data like um, how many of their users are accepting certain missions and how, how successful those missions are so they know what type of missions to push in the future. Um, and they know roughly where their major areas of support are, and this can be a, a, a nationwide sort of um, platform if you're if you're running for a national office, or it can be citywide or even within cities if you're running for city council. So it's very scalable. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's it's a good thing. It's like you you've you've looked at what you're trying to build and almost what the byproducts uh, are that are valuable, uh, which is something you see a lot when you're when you're looking at different companies. Um, especially like you just said, the, the kind of data, data analytics is, is like, it's almost, I'm, I'm not sure if this is what happened for you, but I could see you building the app and then realizing that that's kind of a, a byproduct of what you're doing. It's like, well, we have all this, all of this, all of these statistics and all of this information. Well, what can we do with that? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, my background is, uh, is in signal processing. So I, I came into the project kind of building specifically for that. Oh, okay. And, um, so uh, things like pattern recognition, uh, machine learning, uh, things like that are kind of my field. And so we're going to try to capitalize on, on these different techniques to uh, make sure uh, that missions that get pushed to certain users have high success rates, uh, intelligently understand uh, what a person's interest might be uh, in the context of a mission. Uh, things of this sort that that will hopefully be of a lot of use uh, to uh, singular uh, to individuals who who don't have perhaps a full team behind them to run their campaign. Our system will try to pick up a lot of the uh, the legwork for them. Okay, all right. Has this? Uh, I feel like it's almost a perfect time to be developing something like this. As as the the 2016 presidential presidential election specifically been a, a gr great source of kind of inspiration for how to uh, how to keep growing this idea. You know, it's it's funny because uh, when I first kind of had the idea, and then a while later started proposing it to uh, Colin and other friends and and uh, people around in the community. Uh, I was looking at lots of different uh, disparate, uh, you know, services that were all offering different, like, components 
of what we're now trying to do. So I very strategically analyzed all these different uh, services and needs that people were kind of reaching around for and put us right in the middle of all of it. Um, so as an example, uh, to take uh, Reddit again, uh, Reddit uh, has had a, has been an immense tool for, uh, again, uh, like the Bernie Sanders campaign, and I think the Donald Trump campaign to a lesser extent, but the real like uh, exemplatory one is the Sanders for President um, subreddit. Uh, but the the issue here is that uh, it's it's just push. It's not. It has no feedback. It's not a two way uh, mechanism unless you have someone sit there and read the millions of comments that come in, right? Uh, which hopefully nobody is making s some intern somewhere do <laughs> that, that, would, that, that would be like trying to read the matrix <laughs> right it'd be <laughs> it'd be a lot of overload and yeah i don't not a good use of anybody's time um so uh things like the gamification in things like uh photography things like reddit uh things like facebook and facebook groups and uh getting word of mouth out uh, through Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, things like this, uh, we kind of have fused all these different components together to to put our service right in the middle. Well, and early on too, we did notice um, with some validation of our of our market is uh, there's been several candidates who have come out with their own campaign apps. So there's Field the Burn, for example, and I know Ted Cruz had an Ted app at Cruz one had point. One. Um, and these have all been fairly limited and sort of single focused. So Field to Burn was focused on canvassing directly and just canvassing. And Ted Cruz's app was really focused on building his list of contacts to call. Because it, what it would do is it, when you got downloaded it on your phone, you'd, you'd allow it to, give, to have access to all your other contacts. And that information went back to the campaign and they could start cold calling contacts of Cruz supporters, which makes sense. But it's sort of a very limited scope, whereas what we're trying to do with Zeal is much more all-encompassing. It's a, it's a top-to-bottom solution for how to get your messaging out there and how to really ignite volunteers and, and leverage your your message as it gains strength. Yeah, so that's definitely what it, what it sounds like to me. It's, it's kind of, it sounds like you're building a go-to network where if you want to be involved in politics, this is the tool that you use. Right. And, and again, uh, we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves too much into politics, uh, but again, we can use this platform for uh, community volunteering. And uh, one of the areas that we're hoping to go towards uh, down the road in a few years, potentially, is uh, things like disaster relief. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to provide tools where uh, communications or things like that break down that we could have a, a sort of autonomous, decentralized network of our app running on people's phones or other devices uh, to organize uh, help relief in uh, disaster situations and things like this. So we have, we have many applications that we can reach out towards uh, once we have a user base uh, built up. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like the, that's something many people have said. Once we, we have, have a lot of ideas, <laughs> <laughs> once we have, yeah, yeah, it's all about building that platform. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, looking at the overall kind of structure or skeleton, if you will, of Zeal, it, it does seem like something that'd be very easily uh, uh, transferred to other you know other sources of community involvement. Uh, you could even even down to you could do animal shelters and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. Well, well, wonderful. Well, Colin and Lucas, uh, it's been great talking to you guys uh where can people go to keep up with zeal as you as you enter your alpha stage uh you can go to uh, zeal.us um you can put the www dot in front uh zeal.us uh you can also go to facebook slash uh zeal uh dot us and it's zeal with two l's i think my head's yeah in the, way. <laughs> the url is also down below on the overlay yeah. <laughs> And uh, and we also have Twitter, I think, at uh, zeal.us. Yeah. So. Wonderful. And all of our developers are also on Twitter and Facebook individually, too, and any of them are very approachable. And if you have any questions, you can always contact any, any of the team. That's great. That's wonderful. Well, thank you guys again for joining me. And maybe we'll talk to you again in the future once you enter beta or maybe even launch. 
For sure. Yeah. yeah. I was great. I was going to say a second ago, uh, man, this went by pretty quick. So It yeah. does. It does, doesn't it? It, it? it goes even quicker when there's, you know, more than one person. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, had a good uh, had a good time talking with both of you. So everyone, once again, go check out zeal.us. That's z e a l l dot u s. Keep up to date with this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.